It's a gold medal morning in the mountains. We've got live updates from Vail and Beaver Creek. Thursday, February 11th, all of your Olympic updates and all the fun, Vail Valley Live starts now. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Vail Valley Live. I'm Trisha Swenson here in the studio. As you saw, we just have Sarah out uh, in Vail Village. We have Meredith over at Beaver Creek, and we're just kicking off the show bright and early this morning. We'll be with you for about an hour, and we'd love to hear what's on your mind. You can chat with us during the live show, which is 7.30 to about 8.30. Sometimes we go a little longer if we're having a lot of fun, but you can chat via our Facebook page or our brand new YouTube channel. And we are on Vale Valley Live on YouTube right now. So if you catch us during the live show, yeah, send us a chat. Let us know where you're watching from, what you want to know about Vale and Beaver Creek today. Consider us your concierge to the Vale Valley. You know, if you can't catch the whole show or if you want to just watch it later, you know, hit the snooze button, stay in bed for a little bit longer. It's been hard watching those Olympics and getting up early, I know. But you can do so. And then you can watch us on demand on Facebook and on YouTube, of course. But then on Roku on Apple TV, Amazon Fire. We're also a podcast on Spotify in case you want to listen to us in your car or maybe out walking the dog. You can put us in on your little headphones and, and we'll be good to go. But we've got some information about uh, the Olympics today and uh, we're going to be talking to Christina Kosnick landa She is a former women's U.S. ski team member. She's going to give us her take on what's going on over halfway around the world in Beijing, China. And uh, we're all also going to be checking in with uh, Scott Bandoni, who's with Live Sotheby's International Realty, about some of the things going on in the real estate market, the hot, hot market that's going on right now. But hey, let's give you a quick look at the weather. So we've got uh, just a little bit of new snow, just one inch new at Bold Vale and Beaver Creek. And uh, that's kind of that cloud cover that came through yesterday. Temperatures got into the 30s yesterday, pretty balmy it seemed like. And it almost seems balmy right now. We're at 18 degrees for Vail. And it feels like 12, but uh, it's a lot better than the sub-zero temperatures we had last week. So today we'll see some decreasing clouds and highs right around the upper 30s mid 30s upper 30s dropping back down into the 20s and then for your friday we'll see similar temperatures right around the mid 30s and uh, we could see just a chance of snow on your friday about a 30 percent chance of snow showers mainly after 2 p.m so just these little storms and open snow isn't calling for much maybe an inch uh, for Vail and Beaver Creek. Over on Vail Mountain, we're opening things up at 8.30 and we've got 97% of the mountain open. We were just looking at the grooming report and some of my favorites out there. Man, uh, you know, they've been grooming Slifer Express a lot. This used to be called uh, es Espresso. It was next to Cappuccino. And uh, I kind of like that one because a lot of people go to Swingsville, a lot of people go to Christmas. Swing, you know, a Slifer Express on a groomer day, kind of like your own little private run. So that's my little pick for the front side. And then on the back side, you know what? We've got the slot groomed for you in Sun Up Bowl. And then Ricky's Tube, when they groom this in Sun Down Bowl, that's a fun one. And they've got that brand new lift that will be going from the base of Cheer 5, which is the High Noon Express. And then the new Sun Down Lift will bring you up to Wildwood. So that'll be for next season. And also next season, Cheer Number 7, uh, which is Game Creek Bowl, that'll be moving from a four-pack to a six-person chair big exciting news and uh, that that's welcomed because it gets a little crowded down in game creek and there's no other way out so uh, i'm happy they're going to be doing that but hey let's take it out to our host today and find out a little bit more about what the weather feels like and what's going on all right we'll start with meredith she's over at the beautiful beaver creek resort i love that shot oh yes it's holidays 24 7 around here <laughs> it definitely is but yeah, I would agree. It is balmy. It's not too bad. A week ago, we were in the negative, and I was bringing my heated gloves, 
It's not exactly that kind of morning, though. I, I uh, dress properly, though. If you dress properly, it's never that bad. Yeah. You know, you can be cold if you're not dressing properly. So I have, like, base layers on. I have overalls. And I always am so much warmer with, like, a neck gaiter like this. Yeah. I mean, I grew up getting shoved on <laughs> these, shoved over my head. But they do keep you warmer with keeping the neck and the head warm. And, you know, I'm looking at the fireplace. There's a lot of fireplaces around the village that you can warm up with. But it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. I see some blue skies, which is refreshing after yesterday with the full cloud coverage, gray day. And I'm just going to be exploring the village, just showing the viewers some of my favorite spots. Okay, perfect. Hey, have you been watching the Olympics at all, Meredith? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. I've really been loving the skiing, of course. Yeah. It's inspiring my skiing. I mean, I was watching the Olympics, and then I think I've skied, like, my, my best day in my life yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that Or two you're, days ago. I aren't you say. practicing for the Talents Challenge in just, like, I two am. weeks? Okay. Yeah, yes, in yeah, two yeah. weeks. So a little bit later, I'll try to find a map and kind of point out what are the runs that are on Towns Challenge. And I've gotten different advice from people, and now I'm experiencing it. So I'm excited okay. to kind of share my journey with it. And I will say after training two days ago on Beaver Creek, I think it's going to happen. I think I'm going to be able to do it. So okay. going in confidence. I like I like how you call it training. You know, you're training. You're you're you're, you're like an athlete. You're you're training for it as well. Yeah, and it looks like we've got the men's combined uh, today, so that should be fun. And also some freestyle freestyle skiing, um, mixed team aerials uh, from the Genting Snow Park. So this should be fun to watch. It's it's and it's hard to keep track of everything because they're they're 15 hours ahead of us. And you know, sometimes you gotta like when the slalom was going on, you're watching the first run on like Tuesday and then it's Wednesday at 12.45 a.m. for the next one. So it's, yeah, it's been, I, I would, I've been really confused on what day it is. I keep on thinking it's Friday and it's still Thursday because I'm, I'm watching all these Olympic games, but all right. So we'll, we'll let you roll really, around. It's been so exciting. Yeah, yeah, Beaver Creek. And Lindsay Jacobella is doing well, winning the gold. Um, ice skating, so exciting. So, all right, let's check in with Sarah. She's standing by at the International Bridge. And Sarah, right behind you, we've got that big TV. We're gonna be checking out some of the Olympic action right outside. That's right, Trisha. They've got the Jumbotron right behind me on the International Bridge, right along Gore Creek. Really fun way to cheer on your favorite athletes every afternoon. So this Jumbotron will come alive and a fun party atmosphere to cheer for your favorite team. As you mentioned, some, some medal contenders. The Americans did really well yesterday. Lindsay Jacobell has had an awesome run. That was so exciting. She's been in the Olympics four times. Amazing to see her back. So successful this year. And of course, Chloe Kim absolutely unmatched in the half pipe yesterday. So it's so exciting. I agree, Trisha. It's tough to be able to turn it off and go to sleep in time to come in and do the show because it's just so exciting to see these people. And the training that's involved and the years of hard work to see it pay off is just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And it's neat to see some of the other, you know, like I was just mentioning Paula Molson uh, the other day, you know, in the world rankings, she was, was pretty high up there. And to get such a wonderful finish, you know, uh, throughout the, the a couple of events, you know, and the women are going towards the, um, they're going towards the speed events now and the men are going towards the technical events so uh, it'll be neat to watch that be mixed up as well. So, yeah, Team USA all the way. Keep it safe. And on Saturday, they're going to be doing that a kind of Olympic celebration. And River Radimus will be racing that night uh, kind of around 7 p.m. or so. So they're going to hope that people gather. They're going to have people uh, serving up food and drinks that you can purchase and it'll be a little party atmosphere right behind you. So that should be cool. And a good way to honor, you know, someone that really grew up here and grew up in Edwards and went to the uh, Skiing Snowboard Club Vale. He was telling me during an interview when he was here for the World Cup in December that um, school would get out and Beaver Creek would stay open until about 4 o'clock. And he and his mom would, would race up to Beaver Creek just to do a couple runs, a couple laps after school. I mean, that's a true, true love of the sport there. It really is. And so many local athletes, Colorado athletes. I read a few days ago that Colorado has more 
athletes in the Olympics than most countries, than oh, half wow. of the country. So <laughs> Centennial State, well represented. And it's so nice that the local, like you said, with, you know, ski school represented so many folks here to get our attention. And really fun thing, we've got the watch parties, as you mentioned, and you can actually sign these to cheer on your favorites. And we've got some messages from all the way from Argentina to just here in Vail. So make sure you bring your Sharpie and write a note to everyone you're cheering for over in Beijing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so they've got those little signs up there. All right, that's awesome that they've got the one going on. So that's over at the International Bridge, kind of between Solaris Ice Rink and making your way towards the slopes uh, near the uh, Checkpoint Charlie and, and the Lodge. Uh, is it busy down there yet? Anyone? You see anyone? It's it's just starting to pick up. We have a few folks heading up to the mountain. We've seen some patrollers. We actually saw Henry, the original avalanche dog, heading to the mountain to start his day of work. So celebrity sighting already in the village and <laughs> things are just starting to open up. People are having a cup of coffee and heading up to the mountain. So I think it's gonna liven up here in the next 20 minutes as we get toward opening and we'll check out a few more things here in the village. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Sarah. I'll let you go get warm if you need to, although they are saying it's feeling a little balmy out there compared to last week. We are uh, well above zero, 18 degrees in Vail right now. We're gonna take it to a break. When we come back, we'll have headlines and we'll give you details on the roads. future of strength look like it's a personal trainer that assesses your strength and adds weight as you progress it's dynamic weight that adjusts for you in real time for a more efficient workout come on and it's a roster of coaches that motivates you to get stronger faster the future is strength you can feel and results you can see and you can only experience it on tonal Skiing is more dangerous than ever due to crowded slopes and people skiing faster than their abilities allow. Hi, this is Joseph Block, a ski injury attorney at Block & Chaplow. If another skier or snowboarder hits you from behind and it injures you, you're entitled to monetary compensation. Remember, the downhill skier has the right of way. The uphill skier has a responsibility to avoid skiers below. If you've been injured, you need to call an attorney to protect your rights. It's important to preserve the evidence immediately. Call Black & Chapeau today at 970-926-1700. We've been doing this for over 30 years and have collected millions of dollars of compensation for injured skiers and snowboarders. Black & Chapeau has offices in the Vail Valley, Frisco, and Denver to serve you. Your case is our priority. If you've been injured in an automobile or ski collision, call us today at 970-926-1700 to speak to an attorney or go to valejustice.com. This Weather and Mountain Report is brought to you by Carrots Jewelers, creating heirlooms for over 50 years. All right, want well, to give you a quick look at the weather. We did receive one inch of new snow with those clouds in the last 24 hours, but things are going to be clearing up. One inch of new on Vail and on Beaver Creek Mountains this morning. We're going to see the highs into the 30s today. Right now, we're in the upper teens, and according to Sarah and uh, Meredith, they said it actually feels a little balmy compared to last week, but the real feel, about 12 degrees. Our winds won't be too bad today. Um, just a little bit out of the northwest, 5 to 10 miles per hour, becoming west later on. And then tonight, mostly cloudy with a low in the teens and the 20s. And then tomorrow, we'll see things back into the upper 30s. And then we've got a chance of showers, maybe about a 30% chance of snow showers, mainly after 2 p.m. 
otherwise kind of partly sunny so a little mix of clouds and sun we won't have those blue 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 sky days until probably well sunday looks like we'll have clear skies in the forecast but we're we're okay with the clouds we're not gonna get a lot of snow out of this storm system for um your friday in fact it's not even really even a big storm but maybe one inch is what open snow is calling for on Vale and beaver creek mountains uh, over on Vale mountain we were talking a little bit about the grooming yesterday and uh they've got some good groomers if you're going to go all the way back to blue sky basin hey keep in mind that they close first so they close their lifts pete's express skyline express earl's isn't open it probably won't be open the whole season because you would still get to all that terrain in earl's bowl um, through just Skyline Express, Chair 37. But if you're gonna go back there, uh, they've got some great grooming for you. Maybe Ground Review could be a good one for you. Or of course, Big Rock Park, can't go wrong with that. And then if you don't wanna go all the way down and take Teacup to get out of there, you can always take China Spur, and that's just kind of off to um, after Grand Review. You, you look for the sign for China Spur, and that'll take you to uh, the China Bowl Lift 21, and that'll get you out towards Two Elk. So just a couple of things, especially when weekend crowds come up, it can get a little busy down at the base of Teacup Bowl. Over at Beaver Creek, Meredith was saying that she's been practicing for the Talents Challenge coming up. We've got almost all the lifts open, 24 out of 25 lifts. And uh, over there, we don't have the grooming report for Beaver Creek because you know what we just they don't update it in time before we start our show so I'm gonna see if it's updated yet so let me look here usually they do it around eight o'clock yeah it's still yesterday's but um, when we get that I'll let you know what's been groomed maybe sometimes they groom something over at Grouse Mountain which is kind of fun because then you're on a black diamond bl double black diamond and it's groomed that's my favorite to go on those kind of runs but so that's a look at what we have with the train and mountain report Let's give you a look at your headlines. First of all, I want to thank Vail Mountain Coffee and Tea. Maybe Meredith will stop in there and get an empanada. Or, or is she in there? <laughs> she's already got it. Okay, she's already got it. We'll come back to you. We'll see what you ordered. Look at it. She's going to fall asleep on that couch over there. Okay, so for today, Thursday, the 10th of February, uh, we're looking at a moose party on the cover. Check this out. Um, a trio of moose hang out last week near Sweetwater Lake. It's said that moose aren't frequent visitors of that area, but uh, Rick Spitzer, who oftentimes will take pictures of wildlife, contributed to the Vale Daily. He was able to capture them and put them on the cover of today's paper. Also in today's paper, joining forces to stop fires. Local fire departments, knowing flames don't care about district boundaries, team up to do mitigation and public education work. More on this on page A2. Also in today's paper, council members talk Vail's relationship with Vail Resorts. One council member says Vail Resorts has forgotten they're in the hospitality business. More on this on page A4. And we've got a lot of Olympic coverage in today's paper as well. Local Sarah Schlepper, she's given us a bird's eye view. She's sending postcards from Beijing. So messages for home from the local athletes competing in the 2022 games. So she contributed this whole section. So check this out. And uh, you can see Sarah there on the cover. Um, she is skiing for Mexico. Um, she married a man who actually grew up here but is a Mexican citizen. And she's been going uh, to the Olympics for Team Mexico for the last couple of Olympics. So kind of cool to see her during the opening ceremonies. Also, t Steamboat's Taylor Gold, he's advancing to the halfpipe finals. Uh, he was a staple here during the Burton U.S. Open. Real fun to see him doing so well. And then Lindsay Jacob Ellis, she earns the first U.S. gold for snowboarding at the Olympics. So great to see her, uh, you know, it's still in the Olympics. She's been to several. So still great to see her still in the sport and, and healthy. And then the Olympic Minute. Uh, Schifrin sends Nina O'Brien warm wishes. Of course, Nina had that horrific, horrific crash 
earlier this week. So quick hitting social media snapshots from the Beijing Olympics. You can kind of get caught up on page 825. So all that and more can be found in your Veil Daily today. So pick it up. You can grab it in newspaper dispensers absolutely free or just go online to veildaily.com. Now for our roads, we saw that one inch of new snow, but it really didn't affect anything out on the roads. But one thing to be concerned about is the ice. And now we're really into that freeze-thaw cycle. So even on some of the side streets, the parking lots, I've been noticing by the afternoon, you get out of your car, wow, you take that first step, be careful, because it is very icy, and we want to make sure uh, you don't slip, you don't fall. So that's just a little ice report, a safety report for you. But uh, here's a look at the roads. Looks like people are making their morning commute into the area. Tomorrow we'll see the traffic start to increase, going eastbound from Denver up to here with all the holiday traffic. And then on Saturday, I can't tell you enough, you got to leave early if you're leaving the Denver area to get up here and not uh, get caught in some of that traffic. But, hey, let's switch gears and let's talk Olympics. We have Christina Kosnick Landa, Kaz, as we like to call her, on the line Let's bring her in, and she's going to give us her perspective on the Winter Olympic Games in Beijing. It's so exciting to have her with us. And uh, do we got her? One second. Okay, one second. Emma's punching some buttons back here. But, um, okay, it's, we got her. Hey, Kaz. Hi. Good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a long time. Good to see you too. <laughs> All I don't right. have as pretty of a background as you have though. I got to work on that. I know. I know. That's okay. That's okay. But we're happy <laughs> to have you with us this morning. Um, you know, it's been hard to get up early because we're watching the Olympics so late into the night. <laughs> it's, right. It's like, whoa, what, what day is it? And everything. But um, <laughs> first of all, let's give people a little bit of background uh, on you and, um, you know, the years that you were on uh, the U.S women's alpine team give us those details uh i was on the u.s uh ski team from uh, for 15 years from gosh 89 um until 2006 so maybe it was more like 16 years but yeah. <laughs> um i raced in three olympics and six world championships and uh so watching these olympics brings back just a flood of memories every time i just even hear the music or yeah. see anything my kids are like why are you crying mom <laughs> <laughs> oh i bet you know because it is it is just mm -hmm. such a big deal and an, an emotional deal and um you know it's it's fun that we can um just see our our friends and neighbors practically out there and i was mentioning that i, I love the winter games because it seems like we're so close to it with when we host the birds of prey for the men with the downhill and the giant slalom and super g and then even the burton us open brought so many of those athletes that we see now out there so it's i think the winter olympics really touch our hearts here in the bell valley oh for sure i mean i think people just feel connected people that live here feel connected to the winter olympics because it's in it's a lot of what we see on the Olympics is literally in our backyard, and we're yeah. so fortunate for that. And it's, it is a unique connection we have to the Winter Games. Okay. Well, so what are some of your perspectives about what's going on, you know, with the women's team, men's team? So amazing to see Ryan Cochran Siegel do so well and earn that silver. I mean, you can just tell the, the whole team is just so proud of him. It's amazing. Oh, yes. I, you know, he has nothing but rave reviews as far as um, what he, you know, who he is as a person and everybody just has just been commending him like no one deserves it more. What a great guy, you know, and so it's it's wonderful to definitely see that encouragement and support from his teammates and um, from his other competitors. And he has such a long history in his family of uh, Olympic medals. And it's amazing. You know, he actually. Um, it posted on Instagram after his medal and he congratulated uh, Matthias Meyer who won the gold and he congratulated Alexander um, Kilda who was bronze but then he said you know and congrats to my mom and he tagged her saying and you still have the head at the table because she won gold almost to the day 50 years prior to his silver medal you know and I just think what an amazing dinner table conversation right <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> especially with that whole family, you know, like all the siblings. Right. That it's not just them. And, yeah. And um, yeah. he was talking to Brenda Buglione about, you know, their, the, the grandfather that basically took like a, a, a little tractor engine or something to do the tow rope and put some lights on the house to shine it on the hill. And they opened up their kitchen to be the, the warming hut. So just the whole history of the family and just having that love for skiing. And I also think like it gave the teammates so much more like, wow, like, look what Ryan did, you know, hey, we want to, yes. you know, this, how does that work for, you know, your teammates? You know, what, what is that feeling when, when another person does really well? What does that do for the, the rest of the team? Well, I, it can bring out two emotions for sure. Um, and the one you hope that it, it brings out is, and, and this usually is what happens is these athletes train together every day. Yeah. And so for them to see a teammate medal, they know where they are time-wise against him. Yeah. They know exactly where they stand. And if they've been beating him in training or are close to him, they're like, wait a second, like I can do this. Yeah. And, um, and so usually that's what happens is as a team, the more medals we get, I, I think it just encourages the other athletes around them. Okay. Well, wait, I, this isn't, this is yeah. not just a dream. Like I can do this and yeah. it, it can be incredibly encouraging. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's it's within reach. Okay, let's let's move over to the women's US ski team. And of course, you know, Michaela Schifrin, uh, what are your thoughts on that? You know, she I think everybody is still has their mouths open, like what is going on, just in shock and wondering why she's struggling. You know, they just I don't feel like she's you've seen that side of her. We've seen yeah. such a success and such a warrior and so strong and I will say, I think, you know, after the loss of her father, her perspective has just changed so much. And I think we're getting, she's, she's so good at showing everybody truly the honest human side of her. And I really respect that about her because I think in the public eye, that's incredibly hard to do. And she came out after this, um, going out, you know, four gates into the giant slalom and then five gates into the slalom, which is so uncharacteristic for her. Yeah. Um, and she came out and just said, you know what? I, she was just honest. She just said, of course it's, it's, it's terrible, but my perspective is I have to look around and like, look at what a beautiful day it is. Look at yeah. um, my teammates having success and, you know, with Ryan getting a medal and, and just finding the good. Mm -hmm. And I feel like her perspective has just changed so much. I think since she lost her father that she's yeah. able to say, okay, you know what? I'm human. Please be respectful of that. And I'm giving everything I have. I mean, to me, that's just inspirational. Yeah. I mean, almost sometimes we can grasp onto that more than we can grasp onto getting an Olympic medal because most people don't have an Olympic medal, right? Oh, yeah. But every, all of us go through pain and suffering and frustration. And so to me, it just, I, I think, you know, I hope she can turn it around. I hope she can find that spot. But in a way, I think she's being inspirational on a totally different level to so yeah. many people. Exactly, exactly. And we wish her the best and, you know, hopefully everyone else stays healthy. I know that with Nina O'Brien crashing, that was a, you know, a huge, huge uh, hit for the, the women's ski team. But then seeing Paula Moltzon do so well, that was really inspiring mm -hmm. as well because, in, you know, the World Cup rankings, you know, she was pretty high up there in the numbers and to get those finishes you know a top 10 finish and a top 20 finish really really good you know so it's neat to see that and I think for the general public that doesn't know skiing as intimately as, as you do of course and and for us that follow it because we've got the world cup in our backyard you know it's hundredths of a second it's tenths of a second you know like just having these Everyone's really fast, you know, it's just who was the fastest that day. Yeah. So I think it's really, uh, yeah. you know, a perspective of like, hey, just to even get there, to get on the team and to make the trip is an accomplishment. So really, really cool. For sure. You know, it's very hard as an Olympian um, because especially in our country, but not just our country, truly all over the world. If you medal, yeah. you, it's like you made it. Everybody knows who you are. I mean, that's the goal of the Olympic Games. Um, and we often say like fourth is honestly the worst place to come in at the Olympics um, because it's, you're just right there, but not there. Yeah. Um, and yet what you said is so true uh, that you to go to represent your country, to be able to go to the Olympic games, not a lot of these athletes, not just one time, but like numerous times. I mean, some of these athletes is their fourth and fifth Olympic games. 
I mean, and what a, an, a privilege and an honor, and they've worked so hard for that. Um, but the Olympics is a huge emotional roller coaster because yeah. of that. I mean, it's medals or nothing in the eyes of every single one of these athletes. I mean, most of them. That is what they're there for. And so when you see, like, you have one teammate over here that's meddling, you know, with Ryan, you've got Michaela over here who's struggling. Then you have Nina who gets hurt. Then you've got Paula who has a, probably one of her more, you know, more successful days on the World Cup. It is an emotional roller coaster. And I do believe that the Olympics is a great, um, it really shows like the level headedness of athletes. It, they have to stay calm and, and, uh, and just give everything. I mean, there's, there is no in between in the Olympics. It's all or nothing. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. And then they've got a World Cup season to wrap up when they get done with this. You know, it's not like they just go to Hawaii and sit on the beach for a while. Like, like they got the World Cup to finish up once they're done in Beijing. Yes. So it, they just keep yes, on talking. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, anything yep. else? Any other insights to what, what we're seeing over in Beijing from your perspective? Uh, you know, the one thing I've noticed is it's been really interesting and, um, I think the athletes are handling it so well, but I mean, I don't know if you've seen, but they've had to like eat in like little corridors and they've had to, you know, they have no family there and it's just a really different yeah. feel for them. Um, but I feel like the athletes that I have, um, been in contact with and that I've heard from, or just even following on Instagram, you know, they really truly are supporting each other. And that's one neat part about the Olympics as well is just, that there is this camaraderie um, that, th that they're all in it together. You know, they're not alone over there. They know they're all in it together. And, um, oh, yeah. and um, they just, they're having a great time. I mean, and things that we, there's so many, there's so many things I could talk for like an hour on the Olympics. There's <laughs> right. All the different events and all the different medals. And I mean, um, Sydney seeing uh, Chloe Kim get her gold medal yeah. last night. Um, well, it's not night, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Sean White gets to compete now um, in the half pipe today. I mean, the, there's just so much success, and they're they're doing so well. And I just I hope that it'll continue to snowball and roll. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got the the women's speed are coming for this Alpine. The women's speed events are coming, and now the men's tech events are coming. Yeah. Um, so I'm just hoping that the the gold medals that'll just keep snowballing and and that we just get to see, you know, more awesome moments from Beijing because we, none of us get to be there. You know? I know, I know. We're all just watching it from here. Okay, well, Kaz, hey, we'll let you go. You probably got to get the kids to school or something. Uh, yeah, Christina lives here in the <laughs> Vail Valley after she retired, got married. You got four kids, right? I was. Saying, I do, yes. I was saying yes. you got your own Olympics going on every day, just trying to get get them all ranked. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great to see you. Hopefully we'll, we'll see you out on the slope soon. We really appreciate Appreciate your insights and yeah hopefully we can talk to you more during this olympics about what's going on so thank you for your time today i love that it was great catching up okay all right have a great day all right christina kosnick landa former u.s women's ski team member been to three olympics giving her insights on the olympic games all right emma what, uh, what are we doing okay we're gonna take a break we'll come back with more from vale village and more from lions or from beaver creek in the extraordinary we're free to discover more together. Experience it for yourself this winter. Get your lift tickets today. information at veilyetihockey.com. Go Yeti! Vail Valley Live Outerwear, provided by Skea Limited.
Well, we are back. Thanks for watching Vail Valley Live. Don't forget, you can chat with us if you want to ask us a few questions about where to go skiing today, where to go dining. Oh, we've got so many things going on. we got Valentine's Day coming up. We have a Super Bowl and the Olympics. Like, it's hard to keep track of everything. It's Thursday, right? It is yeah. Thursday. I keep on forgetting what day it is. Hey, let's bring it out to Meredith because she's been standing by out at Beaver Creek. I saw her with her coffee and your cozy, cozy spot there on the couch. <laughs> Yeah, I've been sitting by. Yes, yeah, sitting by. <laughs> yes, I'm not standing by. She's sitting by. All right. That's what I love about Beaver Creek is that they've got the fire pits, the big, big, lush, comfy couches. You know, if you want to lounge, it's not about skiing and snowboarding all day. We we definitely want you to relax. You're on vacation, people. You right? wanna wear that certified opera instructor sweater you had yesterday? Yeah, 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 yeah. You you should we be wearing the certified opera ski instructor sweater that we had yesterday. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> These are my favorite couches. Like you don't even know how comfy they are until you sit in them. Yeah. And come on, look at the view. Uh yeah, not too shabby. Oh, you got, you got not too shabby. Someone like being beach friends, but <laughs> mountain friends. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. So what a great interview. I mean, I feel like that. I mean, that was just so fantastic to get that information. I know. I from know. Her and, and her perspective. That's what's so cool is that, you know, like Christina just lives here. Like she's your neighbor. Like you see her at the grocery store and, and she's right there. But really cool that she went to three Olympics and that she's she's got the insights on, on what's going on and um, yeah you know I think it what a different Olympics for for them the athlete village where you're just kind of eating I've heard they're using all these robots and robots that um, little things that will deliver the food to the table like from a from a cable and down and like how like Jetsons is that like dee -dee 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 -dee, here here you go <laughs> the future is here <laughs> it is. but you're right it is very different vibe I must you know I've been hearing from some of my friends over there who yeah. are competing and as we heard in the previous interview we are so closely tied to the Winter Olympics because we live some of the sports we watched these athletes grow up and we're cheering them on so we are very tied to these special you know these winter yeah. olympics yeah definitely and um so excited for that river radimus um event you know with the on saturday that skiing snowboard club vale is putting on with the colorado snow sports museum as well as the town of vale so really cool to see you know him grow up here you know that he um a couple years ago we were at a press conference for the birds of prey and um ligety was still racing he hadn't retired yet and there it was, uh, NBC had gone to River's house in Edwards. And on his wall, like to this day, he still has the Ted Ligeti posters up. So he's on the team with Ted and he's like, yeah, I've got your poster on my wall. I mean, like, it's just, <laughs> it's such a neat thing and just a cool passing of the torch. And I've been loving listening to Ted give the, the commentary, Lindsay giving the commentary. Exactly. So, um, just yeah, I love it. I love it. I just it's natural. I, She's a natural <laughs> on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they both are, and I, I love that perspective. So really cool. But Absolutely. hey, um, now you're looking pretty relaxed now. I hope you're like resting yes. up the quads because you got the challenge challenge coming up, right? That's right. I will say I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little sore because it's steep. If you're training, you're you're skiing black and double black diamonds and if you ski the entire town's challenge, it's 26,260 feet. So it's it's a lot of vertical feet that you're skiing. So I am pacing myself because, you know, as I've shared previously, I'm recovering from an ACL tear. So I'm about at a year. Um, so it typically takes about nine months until you're back at your level. So I'm easing into it and I started, so basically the town challenge, if, you, if the viewers aren't familiar, it's in Beaver Creek, and it's going to be skiing on lifts Larkspur Lift, Grouse Mountain, and Birds of Prey. Yeah, perfect. This is a yeah. great map. There we go. Um, it's a little bit small if you can't zoom in, but if you look, um, so the far right, that's Larkspur Bowl, yes. and that is uh, 10,370 feet. So you can see those three black diamonds right there, and I actually started with those. A little bit warm up. 
I did Lupine, Shooting Star, and Loco. Skied straight down. And then I went over and the far left is the Birds of Prey lift. And that's where um, most of those are going to be double black. So that was Goshawk, yeah, Peregrine, Gold, Gossock. Yeah, I actually pronounce that wrong sometimes. <laughs> um, and then Peregrine at the top, it's still not fully open because um, oh, it's okay. still it's still got low coverage right at the top. Um, and then Golden Eagle, which was super thrilling because that's actually the downhill course of yeah. the Birds of Prey, so the men's super G. And they have a sign there. So it's definitely humbling when you ski up and you see that and you know the best skiers are skiing yeah. that run. But the conditions are very different. So when those skiers, they're skiing on basically a sheet of ice. And yeah. when I was skiing, it, it's, it's moguls and it was soft. So it's slightly different conditions. But, I mean, it gets your heart going. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And, and you know what? It, it, you know, they inject the course with water. So even though we've had snowfall since the birds of prey in early December, like, oh, there's a couple of glimpses of like how steep and like how crazy of a surface that could be from the races. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, crazy. you drop in and it was a sheet of ice when you drop in <laughs> and your edges don't grab onto it that easily. So I kind of just slid right in and it's steep and then a mogul kind of like stops and you just got to keep the momentum yeah. and keep skiing down. So, I mean, it was a great day. And then we just lapped uh, Centennial and that was a groomer and the groomers felt so fast after you're skiing moguls <laughs> I all day. I know. Well, I, but, I kind of hope that... Yeah, I think with the lunch break, I think with the lunch break and then doing grouse... I'm going to be fine, but you're going to be tired at the end of the day. I, yeah. I can predict it. Yeah, you'll earn that beer that you're going to get at, uh, you know, at the little <laughs> at the celebration party. And, you know, it, it's good for people to pace themselves. And I'm glad you're actually practicing now. Because if you just come straight off the couch and think you're going to do uh, the challenge challenge, uh, you're going to be in the hurt locker for sure the next day <laughs> and maybe a couple days. You might get an injury. Like, you, you want to be preparing for this. So, all right. So, I want to... Keep hearing more about the training regimen. That, that's good. I'm glad. You're... Absolutely, I'll keep you updated. And if I, if I, you know, do the actual challenge, it'll be really exciting to share with our viewers. Um, you know, anyone can do it, but you got to train for it. And if you're not quite ready, Trisha and I, we've coined this new challenge, the McCoy yes. Park Challenge. Yes, <laughs> yes. We have 17 <laughs> runs. We have 14 greens, three blues. Check that off the list. Go to the candy cabin if you get them all. You know, let's see exactly. how, you know, how many hours does it take you to do those? Just lap McCoy Express. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, do the McCoy Park Challenge. That's going to be, exactly. you know, another challenge that people do at Beaver Creek is um, they try to ride every single lift. What do we have? Like 24 out of 25 lifts, Elkhorn in mm -hmm. there. So I had some friends that used to try to do that. You know, over at Vail, Vail's just too big. You can't really do it all in a day. But Impossible. riding all the lifts at Beaver Creek all in one day, that's another kind of a like sanctioned challenge. Yeah, yeah, you got to try that sometime yeah. too. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. And quickly before we go, just because I am looking at the view, what many people here in Beaver Creek are going to be looking tonight, Thursday night oh, lights. Yeah. So we're going to be seeing the fireworks and we're going to be ski seeing um, the special ski down and they use glow sticks and you can actually do it. You can participate. They do encourage only, you know, about level five skiing and above because you are skiing at night. But it's such a fantastic event that Beaver Creek throws. I say they're overachievers for having weekly fireworks. But hey, who doesn't love some fireworks? <laughs> oh, I know. Hey, you know what? If you wanted to get more vertical in your epic mix that day, let's say that your buddy's over at Vail and you're like, oh, I'm going to go Beaver Creek. If you go on that lift and you, you'll get more vertical that day that's like there a little like, that's the way you edge out <laughs> edge out the other person you're like oh really uh, i got some vertical at like 6 p.m <laughs> we don't have <laughs> night skiing it's the closest thing we have to night skiing okay emma's telling me to wrap up we're gonna wrap it up uh we will be going to a commercial break we'll have some weather details we'll check in with Vale when we return treat your dog to delicious nutritious dog food specialty items, and high-quality gear for dogs who love to get outside and play. Do-it-yourself dog washing 
and grooming services now available Mountain Canine, the dog friendliest shop in the Vail Valley. Look your best with fashions from the outlets at Silverthorne. Mountains of brands to suit your style with savings up to 70% off every day. Don't forget to pick up a VIP savings card from the Colorado Welcome Center for even more discounts. Become an Elite Rewards member and earn amazing gifts. Outlets at Silverthorne, located 30 minutes east of Vail, exit 205 on I-70. Welcome back to Vail Valley Live. We're going to take it over to Vail Village. We have Sarah over there with Liz Sotheby's International Realty, Scott Bandoni. He's joining her this morning. Hello. Oh, good morning, Scott. I haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> good morning, Trish. Good to be here. Good to be here. Okay. Uh, um, you guys got a little cappuccino, a little frappuccino. What's going on over there? Yeah, Blake is setting us up one. right now. That's right. That, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk real estate, guys. That's right. So I've got Scott here with Liz Sotheby's. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us, there's been so much chatter, so much discussion about the hot real estate market. Tell us what's going on here in the Valley. Yeah, it's um, it's hot. It's a bit, um, it's a bit wonky and it's a bit imbalanced, but um, everyone knows it at this juncture. Um, the things everyone's been reading about, um, I can tell you the true, which is the, the low supply and the high demand. Um, um, really, no one could have uh, predicted um, that there was going to be such a hold on listings right now. But, you know, the pandemic push is real. Um, that, ha that happened to this town. So really, over the last 12, 18 months, I really, I think we've seen a lot of people just say, I'm owning my house. I'm going to use it. I'm going to live in it. I've got a different mindset about where I can work, where I can play. So those people who own property here have said, I'm, I'm holding on to it. That's part of a seller's or owner's mindset and not selling. So we, we're, we're not going to see, the big question is what's gonna happen this year. That's the most number one question that most brokers get, including me, it's what's going to happen? Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but I have a good guess. And a lot of us are guessing that it's gonna be a low inventory year. We typically see properties come online. The normal flow is you put your property on the market at the end of ski season because that's when you'll stop skiing so that will happen uh, but it's i think it's going to happen in lesser numbers so um the the demand for those properties i think will remain imbalanced you're going to find still favor to the seller and that means buyers have to be really diligent and prepared and educated uh in order to buy right this year and those, that that's the key thing really I wouldn't discourage people from buying in this market. You just have to do it wisely and to succeed in it, you really have to prepare. Um, you have to know what you're looking for. And that part of part of all that is, um, is learning the market, learning the neighborhood in which you want to make a purchase. That's the short story. And you bring up such a good point with the shift with the last two years, people are working remote. A lot of kids are doing virtual school. So we had so many people shift from the cities that realized they could they could live and work here instead of just vacationing here once or yeah. two, once or twice a year. I, um, uh, like everybody else, I would read about it too. And then the next day my phone would ring, would ring and I'm talking to clients and friends and prospective clients in those shoes. And they want to, they, they're, they're, they're making full-time use of their part-time home. So, uh, rather than just skiing, they've moved here to their Beaver Creek home or their Vail Valley home and they're living in it for weeks or months at a time. So that changes. And then the people coming in have transitioned from the city right. and brought their laptop and say, I'm working out of Edwards. So it's real and it has happened. And that's, that's the backstory as to why things won't flow to the marketplace like they usually do. So with all those factors in mind, seeing that shift and with supply being so tight right now, what's your advice for the buyer and the seller? Um, uh, sellers have to be strategic. Um, you know, in a seller's market, you would, you know, you could might think, 
I could sell it for anything. I could sell it at top dollar. I could sell it when I want and how I want. Well, you know, some of that is true, but you have to be still strategic and smart on the price because we, 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 you have to um, have a, a factor of value and it's easy to appraise, right? There's so many, there have been a lot of transactions, so it's easy to appraise and look at each neighborhood and go, okay, it's worth X. Well, and the seller says, well, yeah, but it's that seller's market. Okay, it's worth X. What's your speculative value? And there's another analysis there, meaning if you, if you, if you want a top, you know, want top dollar and you want to get what the market will bear, well, then you can do some numbers crunch and say, look, it's reasonable to think I can sell this for 5% over appraisal value, maybe 10%. So you have to do that forecasting. And if you get too aggressive, it doesn't work. And we've seen that too. We've seen in the last couple of months, some listings come out with, with prices that are too aggressive. Well, that doesn't work. So there's a balance to find that takes research. And, and buying is similar in that the buyer has to be well versed in what they want. You can't just run around, you know, shooting a, a rifle around. If you if you if you snipe carefully and know what you want, then you know what you're willing to pay for what you want, and that will involve paying five percent over appraised value. Um, it would be foolish advice to say no. You'll get a deal on that. It's not going to happen. That won't happen until we find more inventory, until there's more competition for sellers. So it's it's okay to buy with a long-term goal, like you're not gonna sell it next year, just in case. But if you wanna buy something, hold on to it for you know four or five years, that's safe. Um, at least we think so. <laughs> so that, that's the short story on, on buying and selling wisdoms. Great advice and such a smart way to do your homework, take a target approach. And speaking of inventory, you have some exciting new inventory that's just hit the MLS last night. Um, yeah, it's um, it's not my personal inventory. My brokerage just came out with um, uh, the listing of um, a new building that's going up in Avon. Um, locals and maybe uh, drivers by have seen a hole in the ground uh, on Route 6 just to the east of Beaver Creek entrance. Um, that has been in the works for many years and it's now come to fruition. So just last night, the listing team put uh, 20 units up for sale at the new building called Front Gate Avon. Um, and Liz Sotheby's has a listing. The listing team is Matt Blake and John Michael Lyles. Um, and they uh, will be marketing of 84 units, 84 condominiums, 84, about 75 condominiums, about nine townhomes um, on that site um, um, starting today as it just came into the market. And um, it's a fantastic product with two bedrooms that have dens and can facilitate people who want to work out of the house. Crazy. It's a wonderful building. You can call me or Google it online to find more information for now. Great. As you mentioned, such a great location right at the Welcome Gates, yeah. Beaver Creek, right on Highway 6. And one more question for you. I hear we have a little bit. You've been in the Valley for quite some time. You know the market so well. And I understand we have some interesting local trivia that you and Trisha <laughs> might have named one of our favorite local restaurants. Does Trish like to tell everybody how long she's been Because she doesn't like it. Stories. Yeah. I hear you giggling. Yeah. No. <laughs> Trish, older than, she, older than she looks. Definitely. So the word on the streets is that you two may have come up with a name for Again, one of our favorite happy hour spots, E-Town. Is there some truth to this? I think we need the backstory so here. I, I recall, and Trish might remember, but Trish and I did uh, a TVA interview uh, from uh, the Riverwalk Village years ago. It must have been 15, 16 years ago. Yeah. And in that interview, I think, this is how I remember it, Trish, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you probably don't remember a damn thing, but you, you, we referred to where we were standing, and one of us said, Edwards, and then the other one said, yeah, here we are in E-Town. Yes, yes, I know. Well, you, you know what? Right? I mean, you know me, Scott. I give I give nicknames to everything. You know, I I I have acronyms for anything. And before there was an E Town, we'd be like, Hey, were well, you gonna come down? Even if you're just going to the brewery, like, Hey, well, come on down to E Town, and we'll go to the brewery. I mean, so we did. And then I don't know if you remember. And this, we were Scott. standing next to the brewery. Actually. Yes, we were standing right there. But so, um, do you remember what we would call, you know, homestead? So where the brewery was, and now yep. it's going to be changing hands. Same conversation. Okay, that was Low Ho, and then yep. where the Homestead Court Club is, that's that was Mid Ho, and then above Mi that was High Ho. And if you lived way up yeah. on Gold Dust Drive, that was Heidi Heidi Ho. 
Do you remember that? That's, we would name our neighbor. That was the like, conversation. That's what we were doing. <laughs> so. and, we, and we got, there was a lot of recognition for that. And what happened about two, three days later, um, Brad Dippy, one of the partners at E-Town at that time, yes. he called me up a few days later and said, Scott, what did you refer to Edwards as the other day on TV8? And I'm like, you mean E-Town? He's like, yeah, that's it. And that was the phone call. That's why they named E-Town E-Town. You know, we, we should get so free. I think we're, we collaborated. We should get free sandwiches every time we go in there. You know, <laughs> free nothing from that place. <laughs> we're kicking the butt, actually, to get away from the bars. I know. Our, our faces should be on the sign. Our little heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we are E Town. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, hey, thanks for the insight. Uh, good, good advice on what's going on with this crazy market and everything. And yeah, and really great information on that front gate, which just, you know, that just came on the market. Just released. Yeah. Okay. Call me or call the listing brokers, but it's a great new development. Yeah. And, and um, Scott also gives good dating advice. Uh, so um, I met my husband the, right. The, oh, right after talking there. to Going Scott. Valentine's Day. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. He's, good with He's not wrong. Bike wisdom, biking, dating, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. perfect. <laughs> All right, we got to get back to the business here. We got to get to some weather. All right, thank you, Scott, with Liv Sotheby's International Realty. They're standing by. Have a great day, Trish. Okay, you too. Have a great day. Okay, let's give you a weather. We've got uh, weather brought to you by Carrots, uh, creating heirlooms for 50 years. And the weather today, pretty similar to yesterday, but less clouds. We did one inch new in the last 24 hours at both Vale and Beaver Creek. Kind of that stealthy storm. Not really any snow on the valley floor, but just higher up in the mountains. And we're seeing the temperatures right around the upper teens and low 20s throughout Vale, Beaver Creek, Avon, Edwards, E-Town. And then your highs going to be right around 35 for today. The overnight low will be 20 or the upper teens. And then on a your Friday, we'll see 35 and the overnight low dropping down a little bit more, single digits for Friday night. We do have a chance of snow on Friday, about a 30% chance of snow, mainly after 2 p.m. Not a lot of accumulation out of this, maybe about an inch. Could be very similar to what we had earlier this week. And then looking at the next couple of days, beautiful forecast, especially for Sunday. You're going to see plenty of sun and a high uh, almost in, the, uh, well, for almost 40, 40 by Monday. So warming up quite a bit. And you can see the sun getting a little bit higher in the sky earlier in the day, later in the day. Our days are getting longer. Now, Vail Mountain still opening up at 830, closing at 330. In March, they'll change their hours, but they're not going to do that for really about another month from tomorrow. And then over at Beaver Creek, almost all the lifts are open, 24 out of 25. We were just talking about the Talents Challenge. That's coming up the last weekend of the month. It's going to be Saturday and Sunday. Those are skiing 14 black and double black diamonds on chairs 9, 10, and 11. And uh, it is quite a challenge. 14 runs over 26,000 vertical feet. Meredith's been practicing for this. And that's the thing is if you are going to be doing this, uh, just don't do this right off the bat and just wake up and like we're going to do it. Like do practice, do a couple of these long, hard mogul runs uh, before the end of the month. But we're going to take a two commercial break and come back with more Vail Valley Live. In the extraordinary, we're free to discover more together. Experience it for yourself this winter. Get your live tickets today. Winter is coming, and you can enjoy every minute with Outside Plus, your membership to the outdoors. Whether you're exploring the backcountry or your local trails, Outside Plus has you covered. With expert advice on gear, product discounts, premium access to Outside TV and the Gaia GPS app, and inspiring content delivered from the most respected names in the outdoors. Become an Outside Plus member today to get free tickets and VIP access to this year's Warren Miller film. Join at warrenmiller.com forward slash Outside Plus. We love our new home. Lots of windows, great light. But the birds. They're back. Yes, I hear them. Uh-oh. Why are these birds so angry? At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. We save a lot. I'm going. I'm going. Ah! Hurry, hurry. I know, I know, I know. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. 
Since retirement, I've been trying a lot of new things. With Frank's Red Hot, it's the perfect blend of flavor and heat. Like me. And it's great on all the recipes I've mastered. I put that on everything. You are an electric vehicle. Electricity powers your heart. Want to feel your heart beat faster? Drive an electric car. Where the loudest sound is the beat of your electric heart. This is the new Nissan. Love is the theme all month at Knapp Harvest, and they invite you to experience their love of food, flowers, and bees. Pick up a delicious dinner and dessert for your Valentine. Grab jewelry for a friend and bath salts for yourself and show your love for the planet with fill and refill. Knapp Harvest, your indoor farmer's market, opens seven days a week. Treat your dog to delicious, nutritious dog food specialty items, and high-quality gear for dogs who love to get outside and play. Do-it-yourself dog washing and grooming services now available. Mountain Canine, the dog-friendliest shop in the Vail Valley. This weather and mountain report is brought to you by Live Sotheby's International Realty, Colorado's leading real estate firm. Contact their Vail Valley Broker Professionals today to help you live the life you love. I want to give you one last look at the weather before we leave you for today. If you're just waking up, just uh, starting to look outside, there is some cloud cover. We did get one inch new in the last 24 hours, but we're going to see the sunshine today. We'll have partly cloudy conditions throughout the afternoon. And then by Friday, we could see a 30% chance of snow showers, mainly after 2 p.m. going into the evening. And not a lot of snow accumulation from this, maybe one inch possible in uh, that 24 hour period. But temperature wise, we're gonna get into the 30s again today, drop down into the teens tonight, 30s for tomorrow, and then single digits for your Friday night. And then by Saturday, Sunday, mostly sunny, lots of sunshine by Saturday and Sunday, and uh, almost 40 degrees Sunday and in the 40s on Monday. So with that to look forward to, another nice, nice weekend. And then on Vail Mountain, we did groom quite a bit. You can pay attention to the crawl at the bottom of the screen, check out what's been groomed. Over at Beaver Creek, they don't get their groomer done before we um, do the show. So so we just basically have to keep on checking. And if I check right now, we'll see. Oh, it's still on February. I don't oh, know. Wait. No, we got it. We got, oh, we it. got it. Yep, we got it now. So let me look here. Let me see what we got. Groomer's Choice is what the groomers, uh, what they call what they've done after midnight. So Cresta's in that category. Sawbuck over in Batcher Gulch. We also have Gunders and Cabin Fever off of the Batcher Gulch Express. And then um, Gold Dust on Main Mountain, President Ford's off of Chair 12, the lower part of it, and Lower Stacker. A couple of suggestions for you if you're going to be going out to the beef today. I but, don't know if Meredith's meaning to do this, but she's giving us a little corduroy report. Oh, right look at that. Oh, man. Look at that. Corduroy, my favorite fabric, <laughs> right there. And that's what it's all about today. Get out there early. Lifts open at 9 over at Beaver Creek, 8.30. They're already starting to spin over at Vail. And uh, that's a nice shot there. All right, should we say goodbye to our, yeah, our oh, peeps? Oh, she's coming. Oh, do it again, Mayor. Okay. Oh. <laughs> A-OK -okay on the corduroy report. <laughs> love it. Love it. Walking right through there. All right. Well, let's let's say hi to Sarah and goodbye to Sarah. Oh, there's everybody. Okay. All right, Sarah, fun interview with, uh, with Scott Bandoni. Hey, look at all those people behind you. Wow. That's right. The gondola, gondola one just started spinning. It's so fun. In the last hour, we've been talking to Meredith and Trisha. It has just come to life here in the village. A lot of people heading up to ski. Should be a gorgeous bluebird day on the mountain. So make sure you get out there and enjoy it. Yeah, awesome. And, um, you know, it's nice to have not the weekend crowds, but um, that gondola gets people moving pretty quickly, too. They can put 10 people in a car. They are loading the gondolas to full capacity out there. And then, Meredith, we've got a little bit of sunshine where you are. It is brightening up, warming up here at the base, and it's getting more lively by the minute. There are dogs running around, you know, the ski patrol dogs. Willie's yeah. just having the time <laughs> of his life this morning. And you know, actually the biggest update that I'm looking at right now, we finally have 
the wood maze being built. So I'm actually kind of avoiding some of the the, the drills, but we finally oh, yeah. have this back, which is normally always oh, yeah. here, but I was surprised it hasn't been here yet. So they are making it right now. Making it for a minute. Okay. Hey, we got a little chat. Uh, Ride Divide said, hey, it's been so cool to have so many local connections at the Olympics. Yeah, we, we're loving these local connections. And then Ken Hovey is uh, saying, oh, between Eagle and Gypsum, that's the nickname Egypt. Yes, that is right, Ken. <laughs> it's all Egypt. the local names. Egypt, yeah. So if you want to know what some of the local names are, just ask us and, and we'll give you guys the scoop. Okay, well, thanks so much for your reporting this morning, ladies, showing us what's going on. Great to have you on the show today. And thanks you for watching us. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.